Halu' is a step further. Halu' is not only are you not patient, it's actually whenever something, a temptation comes in front of you, you immediately rush towards it. You don't think twice about it. You are the, the, the ideal consumer. You're the marketer's dream. You see a product, you buy it. Shopaholic. You know? You're the, you're the one that they want to in, your, in their store or on their website because they know you'll just take it. You'll consume and consume and consume without consideration. This is halur. The human being was created quick to consume without consideration, without halting himself. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرْهُ جَزُوعًا When harm comes to him, he loses patience entirely. So first you're quick to consume, but when the harm comes as a consequence, if you're so quick to consume and don't consider what you're taking in, what, what deeds you're engaged in, obviously there are going to be consequences. And the first consequence is some harm will come your way. When harm comes his way, he loses patience altogether. Why is this happening to me? I deserve better. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرْهُ جَزُوعًا this is Allah's complaint about the human being that's self-absorbed. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ And when the good comes to him, manu'a, he's preventing, extremely preventative of others of getting it. So you, something good comes to you, you think, how do I not, not let others know that I have this? Because they might want to share in it. I don't want to share this with anybody, I want to hold on to it for all, all by myself. You know? This is actually a, a, the example, the case study of this we already learned. You remember the farmers? So the next night, next morning, they were going to go cut their crop. Don't let any poor people find you. Because we might have to give them then. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Except the people of Salat. People who pray. Allah is saying these bad personality disorders, these moral dilemmas, are addressed by what? By Salat. The question is though, how come they're not addressed by my Salat and yours? must be something missing in our salat. Because if it really was salat, then greed, selfishness, it addresses those things. Allah says for example, إِنَّ salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. You hear this in every khutbah. No doubt about it, salat prevents, prayer prevents from shamelessness. It fights against shamelessness and all forms of evil deeds. This is part of the munkar by the way. This halu' and jazu' this is the munkar. Fahsha is on, on top of that. And Allah says, Salah is a solution to that. Prayer is a solution to that. How, how so? Because prayer is supposed to be a transformation of two kinds. I gave a khutbah about this this last week. The concept of tadabbur, the concept of reflection in Islam, in the Qur'an. What does it mean, reflection? You see, reflection is a two-pronged two thing in the Qur'an. Uh, let's first talk about the word reflection itself, tadabbur. Tadabbur comes from dubur. We saw a similar word here, adbara, he turned back, right from the same root. Dubur means back. When you take a shallow look at something, like a building, you just kind of glanced at it, then you know you're familiar with it. You've seen it. But if you do tadabbur of it, meaning you know all sides of it, you even see the back of it. You've taken a good look at it, you've explored it thoroughly until you even see the back of it. You've got a full view of something. Which one takes longer, to glance at a building or take an entire inspection? Inspection. Tadabbur in the Qur'an, which is the word for reflection, is you don't just read the ayah, you dive into the ayah and find out what's behind this ayah for me. Behind this ayah, there's a lesson for me. There's the sign, this is what the ayah says. The human being was created greedy, quick to consume. That's what the ayah says. Behind it, what is it saying about me as a person? That's tadabbur. Now tadabbur itself is two-pronged. It's a two-part thing. On the one hand, tadabbur is a reminder. It's spiritual in nature. A reminder is in the heart. Allah says, Allah bi-dhikri Allahi tatma'inna al-qulub. Right? Dhikr is in the qalb. I say this all the time. So on the one hand, tadabbur is, you know, uh, spiritual. On the other hand, tadabbur is actually a thought process. It's reflect. It's uh, reflection and thought and a pursuit of wisdom. It's an intellectual thing. And it's both of these things. Now how do we know it's both of these things? Allah complains in the Qur'an twice about people not doing tadabbur. Complains twice. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran. Once he complains and says, the problem is spiritual. He says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Why don't they reflect on the Qur'an? Why don't they look deeply into the Qur'an? Or is it the case that their hearts have their, lock, their, hearts have their locks on them? 
Is that the case? When Allah complains that the hearts are locked, obviously He's addressing an intellectual or a spiritual problem. He's saying reflection on the Qur'an is not there because you have a spiritual problem. Conversely, He's saying reflection on the Qur'an will address your spiritual problem. Reflection on the reminder through the Qur'an, etc. Okay? So it's a spiritual exercise. The second, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبُرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا How come they don't reflect on the Qur'an? Had it been from other than Allah, they would have found a lot of contradiction in it. Roughly speaking, that's what Allah says. Now the thing is, to find contradiction or find consistency, is that a spiritual exercise or an intellectual exercise? That's an intellectual exercise. He says, if you truly reflected on the Qur'an, you would come to the conviction that there are no inconsistencies in it. There are no contradictions in it. It has to be the word of Allah. That's an intellectual exercise of tadabbur. There are two sides of it. But the thing is, when do we engage with salat, with tadabbur? With, with Qur'an, with tadabbur, I said it in the sentence before in the question, it's salat itself. Salat is the exercise of tadabbur. Salat, when we recite Qur'an in the prayer, that is supposed to be the moment of reflection and thought. Ideally. Why is that? Because the, 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 the concept of thinking clearly means you're not thinking about other things and you're not distracted. Allah created this institution in which you're forced to leave everything out. You're forced to not be doing business, not be checking your text messages, not be making a phone call, not be talking to anybody else, not even be looking around, not even be making unnecessary bodily motions. You're physically restrained, you're, sit, you know, you're, you're restrained in your situation, in the things you say, and it's the perfect opportunity for you to now genuinely leave the world behind and truly reflect. Now if someone becomes a person of reflection, it starts, if it's real reflection, then it starts cleaning the way they think, and it starts cleaning their heart. It's an intellectual cleansing and it's a spiritual cleansing. It's a cleansing in both, on both sides. Salat can do that if it's a conscious exercise. That's why Allah says here, you have these issues, and these issues are spiritual in nature, they're moral in nature. Greed, lack of sabr. And the solution to that, Allah says salat. Salat. But the, the, and I said, how come our salat doesn't do that? Because our salat is missing what still? It's missing tadabbur, it's missing khushur. It's missing reflection. That's what it has to gain. That's, a, that's the real project in the life of a Muslim, I tell you. Our character transformation is in the prayer itself. That is the spiritual healing of a believer. And that is the ultimate project of a believer. How do I become conscious? Because you know, it's very hard for us to turn everything else off. When we say Allahu Akbar, there are processes running in our mind, and they're still running when we say Allahu Akbar. The guy writing code leaves, uh, he hears the iqamah and he hits a slash and he starts, he says Allahu Akbar and he's finishing code in his salat.